Now some time after, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brethren in all the cities where we have preached the word of the Lord, to see how they are doing. But Barnabas wanted to take with them John also, who was surnamed Mark. But Paul asked that he, inasmuch as he had deserted them in Pamphylia, instead of going on with them to their work, should not again be taken along. And a sharp contention sprang up, so that they separated from each other, and Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and set out, the brethren commending him to the grace of the Lord, and he traveled through Syria and Cilicia and strengthened the churches. And he reached Derbe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, son of a believing Jewess, but of a Gentile father. And he was highly thought of by the brethren in Lystra in Iconium. This man Paul wished to go forth with him, and he took and circumcised him on account of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Gentile. And as they passed through the cities, they delivered to the brethren for their observance the decisions arrived at by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. The churches grew stronger and stronger in the faith and increased in numbers daily. Passing through Phrygia and the Galatian country, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the province of Asia. And when they came to Mysia, they tried to get into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And Paul had a vision one night. A Macedonian was standing, appealing to him and saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. As soon as he had the vision, straightway we made efforts to set out for Macedonia, being sure that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day to Neapolis, and thence to Philippi, the principal city of a part of Macedonia, a Roman colony. We stayed some days in this city, and on the Sabbath we went outside the gate to the bank of the river, where there seemed to be a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God, was listening. And the Lord touched her heart to give heed to what was being said by Paul. And when she and her household had been baptized, she appealed to us and said, If you have judged me to be a believer in the Lord, come into my house and stay there. And she insisted upon our coming. 
Now it came to pass, as we were going to the place of prayer, that a girl met us, who possessed a divining spirit, and brought her masters much profit by soothsaying. She followed Paul and ourselves, and kept crying out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they proclaim to you a way of salvation. This she did for many days, until Paul, being very much grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I order thee in the name of Jesus Christ to go out of her. And it went out that very moment. But on seeing that their hope of profit was gone, her masters seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the rulers. And bringing them to the magistrates, they said, These men are making a great disturbance in our city. They are Jews and are advocating practices which it is against the law for us to adopt or observe, since we are Romans. And the people joined in the attack against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods, and after inflicting many lashes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. On receiving such orders, he cast them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing the praises of God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a great earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once all the doors flew open, and everyone's chains were unfastened. And the jailer, roused out of sleep, and seeing that the doors of the prison were open, drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then calling for a light, he ran in, and trembling for fear, fell down before Paul and Silas. And bringing them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his household. And he took them at that very hour of the night, and washed their wounds, and he and all his family were baptized immediately. And taking them into his house, he set food before them, and rejoiced with all his household over his faith in God. But when day came, the magistrates sent the lictors with the instructions, Let these men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul. The magistrates have sent word that you are to be released. Now, therefore, come forth and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly and without trial, although we are Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now are they going to put us out secretly? By no means, but let them come themselves and take us out. The lictors reported these words to the magistrates, and on hearing that they were Romans, they were alarmed, and came and appealed to them, and taking them out, besought them to leave the city. And leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's house, and after seeing the brethren and encouraging them, they departed. Paul and Silas found a jail. Oh, I know. Paul and Silas found a jail. Oh, I know. Paul and Silas found a jail. Oh, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as was his custom, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and showing that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and that this is the Christ, even Jesus, whom I preach to you. And some of them believed and joined Paul and Silas, along with a large number of the worshipping Greeks and of the Gentiles, and not a few women of rank. But the Jews, moved with jealousy, took certain base loafers, and forming a mob, set the city in an uproar. They attacked Jason's house and sought to bring them out to the people. But not finding them, they dragged Jason and certain brethren before the magistrates of the city, shouting, These men who are setting the world in an uproar have come here too, and Jason has taken them in, and they are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And they stirred up the people and the magistrates of the city who heard this, 
and they accepted bail from Jason and the rest and then let them go. But the brethren straightway sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And on their arrival there, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were of a nobler character than those of Thessalonica, and they received the word with great eagerness, studying the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many of them became believers, and so did no small number of prominent Gentiles, women and men. But when the Jews of Thessalonica found out that in Berea, too, the word of God had been preached by Paul, they came there also to stir up and excite the multitude. Then straightway the brethren sent forth Paul to go as far as the sea, while Silas and Timothy remained there. But those who escorted Paul took him as far as Athens, and receiving instructions from him to Silas and Timothy to rejoin him as soon as possible, they set out. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, he was exasperated to see how the city was wholly given to idolatry. He had discussions, therefore, in the synagogue with the Jews and those who worshipped God, and in the marketplace every day with those who were there. And some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him, and some said, What is this babbler trying to say? But others, He seems to be a herald of strange gods, because he proclaimed to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know just what is this new doctrine which thou teachest? For thou bringest some strange things to our ears. We wish, therefore, to know what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the visitors there from abroad used to spend all their leisure telling or listening to something new. Then Paul stood up in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every respect you are extremely religious. For as I was going about and observing objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship in ignorance, that I proclaim to you. God, who made the world and all that is in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples built by hands. Neither is he served by human hands as though he were in need of anything, since it is he who gives to all men life and breath and all things. And from one man he has created the whole human race and made them live all over the face of the earth, determining their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands, that they should seek God and perhaps grope after him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as indeed some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. If therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to imagine that the divinity is like to gold or silver or stone, to an image graven by human art and thought. The times of this ignorance God has, it is true, overlooked. But now he calls upon all men everywhere to repent, inasmuch as he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world with justice by a man whom he has appointed and whom he has guaranteed to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of a resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer, but others said, We will hear thee again on this matter. So Paul went forth from among them. Certain persons, however, joined him, and became believers. Among them were Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this he departed from Athens and came to Corinth. There he found a certain Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, 
because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul visited them, and as he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and he set to work, for they were tent makers by trade. And he would preach in the synagogue every Sabbath, bringing in the name of the Lord Jesus, and try to convince Jews and Greeks. But when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul was wholly occupied with the word, emphatically assuring the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But as they contradicted him and blasphemed, he shook his garments in protest and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am innocent of it. Henceforth I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and went into the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house adjoined the synagogue. But Crispus, the president of the synagogue, believed in the Lord, and so did all his household, and many of the Corinthians heard Paul, and believed, and were baptized. And one night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, Do not fear, but speak, and do not keep silence, because I am with thee, and no one shall attack thee or injure thee, for I have many people in this city. So he settled there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Beautiful decorated facades with columnades, with Corinthian capitals, and to the right there were public baths, uh, latrines, and uh, there is fountains. Down below here there is a fountain. So imagine all these crowds of people, these important people, wealthy people, starting from the port up in here. And there was the monumental gate, what we call Propylia, the gate of the city. We are standing just after the gate. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a concerted attack upon Paul and took him before the tribunal, saying, This fellow is persuading men to worship God contrary to the law. But as Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, if there were some question of misdemeanor or serious crime, O Jews, I should with reason bear with you. But if these are questions of doctrine and of titles and of your law, look to it yourselves. I have no wish to decide such matters. And he drove them from the tribunal. Then they all seized Sosthenes, the president of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to it. But Paul after staying there some time longer, took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria with Priscilla and Aquila. At Sencre he had his head shaved because of a vow he had made. He arrived at Ephesus and there he left them, but he himself entered the synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. But when they besought him to stay some time longer, he did not consent, but bade them farewell, saying, I will come back to you, God willing. He put to sea from Ephesus, and landing at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem to pay his respects to the church, and then went down to Antioch.